just one thing to note guys evil gates and styles and really big gates like this as you find them sometimes farmers will open gates purposefully for their animals their livestock to go and get water or feed so leave them as you find them okay I found what I thought was a perfect location under this maple tree behind me I'm close to a water source and it is fairly flat the ground with some overhanging branches that I could leap the labu over the only thing that's concerning me is there's a smell of maggots around here it's in this area somewhere I'm not quite sure where I did a bit of a scout around but I couldn't find the carcass um, primarily I don't want to camp in this area one because of the smell two because it could attract other prey to the area foxes that kind of thing uh, I don't want to be walking in the night by a load of rust rustling foxes and crying foxes over a bit of carrying meat. It looked ideal but it's not ideal on this occasion. So I'm going to carry on upstream and see if I can find somewhere a bit more suitable. So that's the rope thrown over and the levoo's attached by a bit of, a bit of um, shock cord on the D-link at the top. I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to orientate it now. There's a nice little spot. It's a nice little spot here. I want it to be facing the stream in the morning. So I'm going to orientate the door before I peg it out. And then I'll peg it out, release it down a little bit, and uh, off the shot cord, put it onto the D-link, and then hoist it all up. And it should all be nice and taut. Hey okay, guys, so uh, I don't think I've shown this on YouTube before in the complete open configuration. This is with the, uh, the skirt fully zipped open. You can just see it there. And there they could be rolled up and put out of the way but I've just done it haphazardly uh, both doors are open both of the zips that usually are there and there they're both open so you can see it gives you a lot of room inside so you can get access you know you put your kit in there and all that kind of thing now I'll just show you with the skirt this bit and this bit closed Okay, so as you can see, it's zipped up now. And I should be able to close the doors. And zip them along here. Perfect. Okay, so all I've got to do now is get all the gear inside. Let's get a brew on and some tea cooking. Okay, so the sleep system I'm using today is just a cheap old mummy bag. I actually got this from Oxfam. It's had a bit, it's had a wash, obviously. Uh, my Aero 3 compact uh, inflatable mattress. As you can see, it's got a nice big hatch there with gaffer tape. Can't beat that. Um, and then just, I know I've got a ground sheet here, but just something, an extra ground sheet just under this to stop any punctures. Unless it might be a bit twiggy or rocky underneath there. So that's, that's my sleep system. Okay, just dragging everything else into the uh, lavoo now. That's my 70 litre rucksack. Still got some more stuff in there to offload. I'm on gas today, guys. The old Primus gas. Bought myself a cookster. It's not that brilliant. It's not that actually big. It's not that big, but it'll do. Got some repairs to make to the lavoo. Well, not repairs, another mod. Got me cooking. Cooking pots. Also got to do a bit of waterproofing, so I brought that along. Odds and sods now. All good. Just under there, I've got a piece of canvas. Because the problem is, we've got a great big gaping hole. Now the reason for that hole is I used to have a flashing kit there. If you looked in my previous video, Best Levy on YouTube, um, I think that's what it's called or something like that. Uh, I used to have a stove in here and I still want a stove in here come winter time. But that flashing kit that was on this tent has been now moved to the bell tent, the four meter bell tent, because we've been away in that, uh, with that recently. So I had to move the flashing kit over, obviously to use a stove in the bell tent. So I need to buy another one for here. But what I was thinking of my mod today was making a flap on the outside make a flap on the outside with velcro so that this can be velcroed over 
so I haven't got a big hole in my tent basically. So that's one of the mods I'll be doing today. I thought I'd try one of these for a change. I got this when we went away to Shell Island uh, last last weekend, I think it was. Uh, Blay Band, which is a the Nordic food favourite. Now, Thai chicken with rice and vegetables doesn't sound very Nordic to me, but there we go. It's an outdoor meal. It's froze dry. A lot of it's in there is English on the back, but a lot of it's in other languages. So I thought I'd try that out. I'm gonna try my new cookser. Um, not much can be said about that although it's very small and today's choice as always guys you know me too well with my oxos I think it's just going to take one cube this so there's me uh, there's my oxo as usual I suppose you could use this as a mortar if you used a, uh, a stick as a pestle you could grind stuff up in it but there we go that's all ready it holds about half a mug, half a standard mug, a man's mug, it holds about that much water. Hi. I did want to do a bit of work on the levee before that boiled, but uh, at least just measure some canvas up. All right, just be careful while I'm opening this. It, it does open up like a bowl. <laughs> Have a look for the sachet. If there's a sachet in here, usually they do put a sachet in. Sorry guys, you can't see what I'm doing. No, there's no absorbing sachet in there. So just kind of open it up a little bit. Without spilling it everywhere, but it opens up like a, a saucepan kind of style. And it says top up to H. So can you guys see that? It's just there, top up that much with water. Usual thing, um, let it soak for 10, I think it's 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes, let it soak for 10 minutes. With boiling water in there, give it a stir. So let's try this out guys. This is a new one on me, so. So let's top up to H. Which seems an awful lot of water to me. Right, there's H. Give it a stir. Always with a spoon, guys, never a fork or a knife. Give it a stir round, that's what they say. I'm only following the instructions, this is a, a new one on me. And then just seal it up like a Ziploc bag. If you can do that. Right, and there we go. Give that 10 minutes. So it's going to be roughly 7 o'clock when it's ready. I'm going to have to get some more water on because uh, it's kind of used all the water that I had. I do like my Oxo. Maybe I should get them to sponsor me. About another five minutes ago for the meal. I've got a piece of material for the uh, for the stove jack area on the tent. I'll have something to eat and then crack on with that. And as I suspected, it would be quite watery. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's more like a broth than a meal. 
I'm on my second cup of, uh, of Oxo, this time I've got beef. So I thought I'd substitute it with um, substitute the meal with a bit of ham using my uh, Grizzly Bushcrafter knife. Really nice knife. Perfect for doing little jobs like this. I need. Um, I am really going off these uh, froze dry foods. I was thinking of getting a dehydrator myself at one point. Um, I may still do. But I'm going to make sure that you don't need to put as much water in there. So I'm just going to get that out of there. Substitute my diet with, diet with a bit of protein, guys, innit? Right, so as you can see, my lavoo's got a big gaping hole where the uh, the flashing used to be for the stove. Now I've cut a piece of canvas. I'm going to position it about there. Sew down the sides, so hem it over. Sew down the sides. Sew it onto the lavoo at the top. It doesn't have to be neat. It's just to stop the rain. Um, a little bit of velcro down the sides here, maybe one at the bottom, so that that, if the stove jack is in there, it can be all kind of cinched down like that. And if when I'm not using the, the stove in there, so the flue's not coming out, then I can just roll the whole thing down and have a little bit of waterproofing. So as you've just seen, I finished sewing the flap on for the stove flashing. Now today I brought my hose lock, um, pressurised applicator and some standard uh, universal Fabsil fab protector. When I was waterproofing the Lavoo, I, I used more than that. Uh, I used about three litres but I ran out kind of near to the end. So I've brought some more with me, which I'm going to uh, put in here. But I also want to do my smock. Now this is a genuine issue army smock, uh, windproof, but not very waterproof. It is cotton, so it's not waterproof at all. So I'm just going to do the bits of the Levu where I thought I'd missed with the fab sail and then I really want to get my schmock done really so I'm going to find a little bit of a branch that I can hang it on and then spray it.
Now the great thing about these applicators, once they're pressurised, is that they have a button, so you can just do it like that, or they have a button for continuous, so you can take your hand off and just continually spray. I'm just going to give it a little bit on this. Like I say, I do what I do with schmock with this stuff, and it does have to be soaked right through, so... I'll carry on and bring you back in a minute. Okay, so uh, I couldn't actually film while I was doing that because I was using my tripod to put my schmock on while I waterproof that, but uh, that's proper drenched now. I should have done it when the sun was out really, but uh, it should dry. Won't take very long, I don't think. We have to make sure that the, the material is saturated, so it's not looking too bad. So back to the Lavoo. I've done the areas where well I've actually been all around it about three times again but I've put more on the areas where I thought I'd missed last time um, I'm not actually sure how many litres is this uh, one litre this one so it's probably had about three litres on it altogether so you can just see where it's uh, the rest of it's drying as we speak but you can see where uh, it's still patchy a little bit So this should be absolutely bomb proof now for uh, for the rain. Yeah, so uh, it's looking looking okay. It probably it, well, it, it does stink this stuff, but uh, there's the flap I've made for the uh, stove jack or flashing kit. I've got the hook and loop. The loop is already attached to it, so all I need to do now one final job is just sew the loop onto the lavoo here, and maybe put a little bit here so it can be pinned back like that when the stove's in operation get it out of the way kind of thing but that'll do for tonight I don't think it's going to rain for tonight it may blow about a little bit but uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it if it happens as you can see there's still still quite a lot of uh, white in where the the wax hasn't quite melted so that's another little job for another day you know, on the on the arms that I've sewn up as well if they need uh, melting in and what have you but yeah I'm happy with it it's doing its job so the sun's gone down now and uh, might get another brew one but I need to tidy up first um, it will be dust soon what time is it now it's 10 to 9 now so we haven't got much daylight left so yeah it's been it's been all right it's been a good one Right guys, I've got one of these um, hot chocolate mint drinks from one of my army ration packs. Now it does say uh, to prepare hot chocolate drink, please mix 500 millilitres of hot water and stir. Well, to be honest with you, This bottle is 600 millilitres, so I don't want to drink all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do half of it. Boil it up in the uh, in the tent. Just do 300 mils and half half of that sachet, and just see how it, see what it tastes like. Here we go. Wow, you can certainly taste the mint in that. That's quite uplifting, that's quite an uplifting drink if a, a troop was drinking that, I'm sure. It's actually not bad. Oh yeah, might have the other half in a bit. Well that was a nice cup of hot chocolate before bedtime. I'm in my sleeping bag now and I'll see you all in the morning. Just going to listen to a bit of the radio till I doze off. See you. Morning. It's nice to wake up and the sun's out actually. It's going to be a nice day. It's not a cloud in the sky. Uh, we're in the beginning of May, first week of May. And um, it's, I think it's going to be a hot one today. Good job I brought my sunglasses, but uh, I'm only half an hour away from home. I haven't brought any breakfast with me today, so um, I think uh, 
a couple of duck eggs, a bit of black pudding, maybe a bit of bacon's in order this morning, or for brunch, should I say, because it's 11 o'clock now. Uh, the next time we get the Levu out, the the mod that I'm doing on the stove jack, the flap, that should be finished. Uh, that's something I can finish off at home. And uh, the next time I think I'll try it with a centre pole, which takes six sections now, not the four sections as, as normal that you normally uh, use with uh, just a standard Levu. This one actually takes six sections. So uh, I'll try that. I'm actually thinking about replacing the paracord pullouts as well with uh, some some bungee cord or some you know some shock cord just to help it level out a little bit better than what it is doing because uh, I've had it up twice now on uneven ground and it is kind of sagging on one side but you can't help where the tree where the tree branches are um, you've got to use the strongest one and when it's sparsely populated with branches then you can't get a good a good branch to sling sling the rope over not in this environment anyway um, maybe in proper woodland then yeah but uh, down just by the river where I am is uh, it's quite sparsely populated with trees it's more more bushes and shrubs than, than anything right so I'm going to get packed up and um, I'll see you on the next one guys thanks for watching please like and subscribe uh, the channel's up to nearly 200 subs now which is fantastic keep subbing guys because it, uh, it all spurs me on to do more videos um, I think the channel's had a total of about 20,000 views so far on, on the videos that are on there so we'll keep going we'll keep making videos and uh, see you later guys